being honored by Loyola and they're rebuilding the communications department. Congratulations. Thank you. And I'm helping to fund that. I mean, not personally, but I'm helping to raise funds for it. <laughs> <laughs> Have her fund the Skippy Love documentary. Sure. Yes, money. yes. Uh, because he's an executive producer. Mm -hmm. Wait, what's amazing is he's, we got, we've got Robbie, it's like, you know, Robbie, this thing's going to take shape because I know how many people Skippy connects to. Let's start making it clear on IMDb. So anybody who we know we have tape on and anybody who we're interviewing, just put it in a list. How long is the list now? It's like 136. That's how many people you've interviewed already? No, that's what we, we have the archive footage, and then we've, oh. you know, we've interviewed Sally Kirkland, and we're doing Robert Forster soon. And, uh, that's cool. You know, LaMare. You had LaMare. And Monroy, and we've got like, oh. so there's like 40 interviews done. The rest are those interviews that those people aren't alive anymore, but they were celebrities. Absolutely, but just running that footage. Oh, it's nuts to see the IMDb of all the credits that are part of the documentary is what's amazing. I don't think there's gonna be a documentary with that many no, main celebrities. Imagine. Seriously, you really have to, so a friend of mine, you all may know her, Carol Connors, who wrote, sure, co-wrote the Carol. theme from Rocky. So um, they're doing a document, so I don't know who, I'm gonna meet her director, but, they're doing a documentary about her life, which is, you know, she dated Elvis. She did some pretty, I mean, she blows her own horn. And and she's Robert, I remember she, I sat in her house with her, and she was telling me about her affair with Robert Culp. Oh, yeah, that was her, that was her big love. Yeah. That was the love of her life. But she never married. But, you know, that, that's cool. I mean, I'm a, you know, maybe she'll finally win for um, You guys might be up against her. I'd love she, to see her, her. She's a character. She is a character. But those old Hollywood characters are gone. She, she embraced youth. But I helped, I put her on my show, too. I'm trying to think, did I ever have Skippy Lowe on Up All Night? Oh, wow, that, if you did, that would be great footage. I don't know. I I'd have to ask Bobby, because yeah. there are memory laps in my brain from all the things that I've done. Um, I was watching an Up All Night on YouTube uh, where you had Steve Sharippa being kidnapped. Steve Sherb was always on the show. Yeah, but I mean, this particular episode, yeah. they, you know, they, they have a gun to his head. And he pulls his mask down so he can read the ransom note. It was just funny stuff. But yeah, we'd always have him on as a waiter trying to get a tip, washing wigs. I mean, we would do the most bizarre. And then he ends up being this big star. We had so many stars co come through that show. You should read the list of people that did up all night. So I have a video group, um, two videographers in Florida, who have been slowly posting them to YouTube. This is where I, I'm going to say this in front of my husband because everybody this, that, that I've done press with in the last few days are like, you have to get them all up. I'm the only person who has all the footage because USA Network destroyed it for videotape back then, but it was in my contract that they had to give me a copy of, of everything I did. So I'm missing maybe 40 shows out of like 450. So I have, I mean, I'm talking, I have the wraparound part, not the, I have the movies, but I tossed those years ago, but I wouldn't have had. I'm interested in that, but the, 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 the comedy skits, the your skits. intros, your Oh outfits, my God, the people hair. I interviewed, though, I had Sir Max von Sydow in bed with me. I had Robert Altman in bed with me. <laughs> I mean, these, the, na the names that we had on the show, and then some of the staff that went on, the guy, one of our, my little PAs, who ended up writing a bunch of shows? He's been exec producing for Bill Maher for years. So, I mean, just like. Well, you got a documentary right there. There you go. Well, you got to read my book. I think my book needs to be a movie desperately. I mean, because if you look at Joy Mangano and the success of the Joy film, mm -hmm. and I know Joy really well, but if you take it from the entrepreneurial aspect, everybody that I talk to, like when I did KTLA Morning News yesterday, I've known Sam Rubin, obviously, forever as well. He was blown away that whole, the, all of them are blown away they're like I can't believe what you did because you were smart enough to move on you know because there's you, you, there's only so long you can be on the, the door if you're not at a certain level um, financially in every other way and they were so blown away that they all asked me to come back and do business segments with them and everything and I mean, they were more impressed with me ever than, than ever when I was here. Well, I mean, what, what you built is incredible. That's so, that's, so I'm saying as a film, mine has the levity. It has the characters in it. It's got the sexual harassment. It's got Playboy in it. It's got my mother, the zany Southern Jewish character. Do you have somebody in mind to play you? 
never even thought. Oh, what's her name? Is Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> She's a little Jewish. But, um. Oh, we have, oh, I have a family that wanted to meet you. Oh, hi. This is Cindy Dubitz. Hi, Cindy. How are you? Good. I help with their career education camp. Oh, well, it was nice to meet you. I know. Hello. You know, that's my husband. You know, just, just for you guys to know, I speak a lot to college kids. A lot. I, I, spoke, I just spoke to Loyola. I just spoke to the entrepreneurial class at Tampa University. And, I mean, I speak to women's groups and business organizations as well. But because I've had this eclectic career where I came from communications, I majored in, in that and then completely went another way. I went to comedy and acting and then... They really love that because the fact that they have an entrepreneur school, that you can major in that is blowing me away. <laughs> so anytime, I would yeah, love to come. coming up in March. Yeah. Well, I will come back in. I have a lot of doctors here. <laughs> the guy who gives me Botox is going to stand up. Thank you so much. This isn't Dr. Dinesh, is it? No. It was sons here. He's like one of the leading dermatologists. All right. Thank no, thank you, so honey. Much. I, I actually um, I wish I had a card. Uh, I'll, I'll give her your time. Okay, to great. Yes, I appreciate that. I would love to speak to kids Sarah, here. Mom? Yeah, it's great to see familiar faces around here. Good to see you, Cindy. Right, nice have meeting you. Um, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> That's really funny. So you're local. Uh, well, I went to Beverly Hills High. Oh, you did? I went to, her sister was a classmate of mine oh, my God. in high school. And in elementary school, we went to elementary school together. But didn't start dating until 10 years after college. So we were all circling around each other, huh? Yeah. That's amazing. Really? Sons graduated 2008 and 2010 from here. Wow. wow. And I graduated a year before you, 72. Do you remember where we met Lemaire and all these people? Uh, yeah. Well, I met Lemaire in Paul Ryan's bedroom. That's what she told me. She told me that when she was here a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, that's where we met. Do you remember the... the uh... I mean, I am the reason. Seriously, I mean, I love, I love that she gives me credit, but I am the reason that she... I pushed her onto stage. She said that. Oh, yeah. That was... I mean, but we literally met in Paul Ryan's class, right, right. and he was doing his class exactly. in his bedroom. He would move the bed, and the bed sat on a platform, and the platform was the stage. He started in public access here. In yes, he did, right? and he was great, too. Around the same time as... I did Paul's show. We were in Paul's class. That's where I met you. Right. Well, I know. Yeah. Harvey well, that is. I mean, Harvey did teach us, but Paul taught us, too. I, I wound up doing a funeral. That's sad. You were the Paul man? No, I was the... I was sad. He was great. I loved him. I know. I never had her teach me. I loved. All right. Um, let's get back to Skip here. Uh, Skip. Skip was like at the beginning of so many people's careers. It's just unbelievable. Did you ever look at Skip? From the point of view, uh, did I really learn something from his his fingerprint? The way he just leads himself, uh, even though you're not watching him on on film, just in life, his his impression of who he is. Did any of that rub off on you? Well, I think that I was always taught to respect elders, and he was an elder, and he was in Hollywood, so he embraced all of those things. He was. I just felt like he was somebody important in Hollywood and that he was in my life and that he was helping young people. So that alone, I think we all loved him. If we all would have gotten together and, and done some sort of, I don't know why we didn't. Uh, I guess we're, you're so young and you're just you know thinking about your own career and that you could always call Skippy or he would call. How did we get to him? Did, did we just sign up or call? I can't remember. I'm, I'm asking Kenny off. Do you, is that what we did? He would call us. I do remember him calling me. Um, 
And that was cool. First of all, you didn't get calls from important people or older people <laughs> asking you to do their shows. So for him to do that. And then when Skippy asked me to do his television show years later, when I felt like I had reached a successful point in my mind where I was doing my own television show on USA Network, like it was really cool for him to interview. Also, I, I don't need to interview. I'm sorry. Oh, we're that's getting, okay. We're getting feedback from the other studio. We got two shows going on at the same time. Ah. I don't know where she's at. The working studio. That's Students are doing something. They are. The and they're rehearsing and they're loud. We heard yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, there's this studio, which when this was built uh, in 60. Jeez. Um, I entered high school in 69, and this was a brand new building. Wow. Uh, so uh, my class was the first to really take advantage of all the new technology and stuff. So this was owned by the city, and they did their own public access. And then That's wild. Video A was the student thing where, you know, I used to do stuff with all, all the videotapes. Are, and think about that. Up. I mean, we didn't have any of that back then. No. This was the pioneer. This is the longest-running student television station in the country. It's funny because Loyola, where I went to school, they were owned by the, oh, well, it was the Jesuit, Jesuit owned, right. but the Jesuits owned Channel 4, which was a CBS station. So I was able to intern there. So it was kind of lucky too, because we had this tie between a major network television, you know, local station. But, um, yeah. Yeah, the kids have so many opportunities here, you know, oh. Romeo and through some, you know, some of the parents. Place is who's who. Absolutely. Laker kids doesn't. I mean, we well, see you need to do a documentary on Beverly Hills High. Right. That's true. That's in the pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> One of them. Yeah. Yeah. We could, we got to get the more important ones done first. Skippy Lowe. That's cool. That's um, really cool. So the point the point I was making a little earlier was, a lot of comedians are always searching for material to kind of like just uh, create a shtick. You never got to watch, you know, Skippy stand up. Yeah, I never I never did impressions of Skippy, although everyone did. <laughs> Skippy Lou. He kind of flowed around and flit around the stage and that's what I'm saying. He had this effeminate side and some people didn't know if he was a woman or a man and you all, he was just he had a unique look. As I never thought it was strange or unusual. I thought it was Skippy. It was just Skippy was this character. This, but I mean, he was real. It wasn't like he was putting it on. That was Skippy, whether he was home or on stage or calling you on the phone. It was the same, hello, Rhonda, darling. Is Skippy Lowe here? Can you do the showcase? And so I, but you know, I wasn't an impressionist, but I know a lot of people did. They didn't make fun of him. It was never done in a, I didn't have any friends that ever made fun of him for the way he dressed or the way he looked or the way he acted, or I didn't have anybody say, geez, an older guy and, I think everybody just thought he was really cool. I think that we all thought he was just this really cool guy. And um, I'm now married, 17 years, I reunited with my high school sweetheart, and I, and I asked him if, did I talk about Skippy, and he said I did. That, you know, when we first got married, and the people that I came across in L.A. that helped me, and so you, I can count on just one hand, you know, people who truly helped, because everything was climbing on your own. At the end of the day, even your agents don't help you, but Skippy would. And if there was something that he could help you with, and I can't tell you offhand, but he would turn you on to other people or, you know, have you there. Or somebody, so-and-so is coming to the showcase, you need to be there tonight. People don't do that. Um, he wasn't jealous of young people getting ahead or making it. I think he was really confident in who he was and what he was doing. I mean, maybe I didn't know a side of him that maybe he felt he didn't make it in a certain I don't. I never knew that side. It just seemed like he was pretty happy. If there was another side to him, I didn't know that side. Um, but I think he, when he did his talk shows, he that's when he was really the happiest, and he was good. I, I mean, I have to put my hands on that tape because he asked really great questions. That alone is enough that, to make a talent because it's really hard to interview people because you have to listen to interview people, and he did. And uh, so that's a talent in itself. And the fact that he did it old school, I just remember the lighting being very dramatic. And um, it was his own. 
he didn't he didn't go by what was cool and what was in at the time. He just did Skippy, and that's unique. Right. He was unique. If you think about it, I said he didn't do stand up, but he did do stand up because he was on his cable shows. The guy has you know. That's true. 